songs and Bible stories. If you are able and want to, you can stand up and do motions with us and the puppet choir, or you can just sit and enjoy and relax. Um, we'll have some Bible stories from different people in the congregation. Um, but before we start, we wanted to start with our two awesome teenagers who went to Camp Dixie.
seated. <laughs> Invocation. As we gather, I guess, part of that, I'd like to read the uh, opening words here. It helps us uh, maybe learn a few things and uh, give us some direction in our worship. What is the intro? The intro, it's pronounced introit, comes from the Latin word introdius, which means entrance. The introit used to be sung as the pastors came into the church and approached the altar. Why do we use the introit in the divine service? Well, usually the introit is a psalm or parts of psalms put together to help sketch a picture of the theme of the day. Sometimes the intro it can be portions of other books of the Bible. For an example of this, the intro it for All Saints Day comes from the Psalm and the Book of Revelation. But all of it comes from God's Word. Please rise. In the name of the Father. I got too happy. Sorry. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is sure and upright. of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Could we sit or stand? Or you can you stand or do whatever, yes.
Bible story. Christy. except Noah. Noah loved God. God was sad that everyone but Noah forgot about him. He told Noah about his plan to start over. Make yourself an ark, God said. Here's how. So Noah and his family began working on the ark. When it was done, God said, take your family and two of every animal into the ark. Animals creeped, crawled, hopped, and galloped onto Noah's new boat. After everyone was inside, the rain began to fall, and fall, and fall. The ark rocked this way, and that way, on the rising water. Finally, the rain stopped.
time for our second Bible reading. Queen's way.
she would go into the king and ask him to come and come to her supper and bring Haman. Because why? Haman was the king's supper, right? So Esther invited the king to a special supper, <coughs> and then this is where she planned to talk to the king about his new law. Well, during the dinner, Queen Esther told the king that she was Jewish. The king did not know that. So she said, I am Jewish. Would you please end the law that's going to get rid of all the Jewish people? Well, first off, the king was surprised when he found out that Esther was Jewish, and he made a new law to keep the Jewish people safe. See, he loved his wife so much, he didn't want anything to happen to her. Just like your mommy and daddy love each other so much, they don't want anything to happen. Then he realized that Haman had lied to him. He had told him a story. The Jewish people were not bad people. They needed to be saved. So you know what the king did? He arrested Haman, didn't he? And he took away all his rights to be his helper. So what he needed to do then was to find a new helper. So he named Mordecai his new chief helper. And the Jewish people were safe to live in Persia and live there in peace. And guess what else? Esther remained the queen and no longer had to hide her face from God. Mm -hmm. Beautiful woman, beautiful story. <laughs>
people know it as Jonah and the big whale, depending on what version you're looking at. So uh, this is from Jonah 1, 1, 3 through 10. Jonah was a prophet of God. One day, God told Jonah to go to the big city of Nineveh to tell them to stop doing bad things. Jonah ran away. He did not want to go to Nineveh. Instead, he got on the boat and sailed across the sea. God sent a big storm to stop Jonah. The sailors on the boat were afraid. They thought the boat was going to sink. Jonah told the sailors, My God has sent the storm. If you throw me into the water, the sea will be calm again. So the sailors threw Jonah into the raging sea. Instantly, the sea became soft, calm. Just then, Jonah saw a big fish coming.
teach you a really quick, easy way to remember them. They're Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? My mother loves Jesus. Okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. My mother loves Jesus. You can do that, right? All right. Now, raise your hand if you have a sister. Do you get along with your sister? Sometimes. 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 This is one of my favorite stories because I have a sister too. Actually, I had two older sisters. That made me do a lot of chores. Yeah. Okay, because I was the youngest. So they were like, you this, do that. But that's okay. We'll get to that later. So, this is a story about how Jesus visits Mary and Martha. Okay? Jesus and his disciples were traveling when they arrived at a town. A woman named Martha invited Jesus into her home. Jesus entered Martha's home and began preaching. Martha's sister, Mary, was sitting by Jesus' feet, listening carefully to all his teachings. Instead of listening to Jesus, Martha was busy cleaning and cooking the meal for all her guests. Frustrated, Martha asked Jesus, don't you care that I'm doing all the chores by myself while my sister is not helping at all? Jesus responded, Martha, you are too busy preparing for my visit, but there is only one thing that is important right now. Mary knows what is important. She is listening so let's talk about this for a minute. Sometimes we get so busy doing our stuff, or doing the chores, and clearing our house, thinking, oh, we're doing the right thing, we're serving God, right? Which is good. We should do that. But once in a while, you need to calm down, sit back, and listen. Because sometimes we need to really listen to our parents. Sometimes we don't want to. They're telling us to clean our room and brush our teeth and clean behind our ears. Sometimes when we listen to our parents, God's talking through them. We need to really listen. And we need to have quiet time so you can listen to what God is saying. If we're so busy all the time, we forget to listen. And we might miss out on a story like today. We've heard four stories today. And you were all great listeners. Okay? So next time we get caught, you're good to serve, right? Like we serve God. We do our chores. We follow his commandments. We come to church. But sometimes we have to listen. So when you're at church and the pastor is reading, maybe from the gospel or he's giving a sermon, that's a good time to listen. Right? Or when you're just quiet right before you go to bed and you're saying your prayers, that's a good time to be quiet and listen to too. You know what? Can you be doing at school? You can be quiet at school and listen to God. He's with you all it's just not here at church. He's with you 24-7. So just be aware that you can listen to him anytime. Okay? So we're going to do one more song. But I want you guys to stay up here and sing it with me, okay? So let me show you the words real quick. I'll show you the, the, the motions. Okay, so this is the sign language for Jesus. Can anybody do that? You take a tall man and you point to the center of your hand. Do you know why we do that for the sign of Jesus? Why do we point to the center of He's like this. Where is he at? He's on the cross, right? And that's where the nails were. So that reminds us that Jesus loved us because he died on the cross. So that's the sign for Jesus, okay? And this is love, okay? And then this is serve. And then the fun part is praise. Okay, so we just put our hands up. So you all want to stand up here with me and do it? Or you all want to go back to mom and dad and sing with them? It's your choice. What do you all want to do? Mom and Dad? Okay, you guys can go back to Mom and Dad. We'll sing it. Okay.
make a seal. <coughs> and it was different in those days, because that was like 500 plus years ago. And so, uh, but he decided to, to make a seal. And on his seal, Tallulah, are you listening? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now on his seal, he started in the middle. And what's in the middle of that? This seal, Tallulah. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, it looks like a, well, uh, is it a cross? Oh, yeah, a cross. Oh, good. Can I get a prize? <laughs> which reminds us that Jesus died on the cross. Died on the cross for our sins. Yeah. Heard Mrs. Smith here a few minutes ago talking about the, the uh, symbol for Jesus. And, uh, and it, it hurt. Jesus died on that cross. And those nails were real. But he did it because, well, he loves us. He loved us so much. And so he, he ended up dying on the cross to save us from our sins. That's so sad. It is. But it ends up being really good. Oh, good. Hold on. Okay. All right. So what's the next thing, Tallulah? What else oh, do you gee. see? It's giving me all the hard stuff. Oh, let's see. Oh, it looks like a cup in here. Oh, it What do you think of when you see a heart? Valentine's. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day, when you see a heart on Valentine's Day, it means that you love somebody. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That oh. you love somebody. Yeah. And, um, and we see a red heart here reminding us again of Jesus' love for us. Jesus loved us so much that he again died for us on the cross. And so that heart reminds us of his love. Not only reminds us of his love, but how we should love other people. Do you love other people? Raise your hand if you love other people. Okay, Tallulah. Wait a minute. Let's see yes, now. That's what this young man, what is his name? His name is Walker John. Oh, Walker. I like that. Yeah, his middle name is after his grandpa. Okay. Yeah. All right. Take a look at the next thing. That's really kind of a hard one. Ooh. That's the next thing you see coming out from the cross in the heart. That white thing? Yes. Anybody got any ideas what that um. is? Rose. Oh. There's a good young man oh, right yeah. there. He, uh, he said a rose, a white rose. Yeah, and it's like looking down at the rose instead of, you know, looking at it sideways. You it's like what? looking down. I like yellow roses. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sheet over here. <laughs> why, did he, why did he choose white? Yeah, that's a good question. Why didn't they get yellow or red? Red or... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's white because it, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And when we think of the Holy Spirit, we think of pure and, and clean and white. And so that's the... The white rose of the Holy Spirit. And we learn about the Holy Spirit in a book called, anybody? The Bible. The Bible, yes. And um, tells us all about the Holy Spirit and, and how he moves us to believe in Jesus and to love Jesus as he loves us and to love other people. Okay. What's I know the, the next one. Well, let's call on somebody else. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> Cora, what's the next color do you see? Green. Perfect. Yes. Green and one more color. Blue. Green and blue. Got any idea what that might stand for? Reminds us we just sang a song. He's got the whole world in his hands. Yes. And so that reminds us of the beautiful world that God made for us. Reminds me of the ocean. Yeah, it reminds Tallulah of the ocean. Did I say we had a seat over here? <laughs> <laughs> and 
so, yeah, it reminds us that you've seen some beautiful sights, because I know some of you go away on vacation, and maybe you go and you see some of the beautiful sights that God has made. We don't even have to look far. It's all around us, really. The wonderful world that God has made. Okay. The last thing. The last thing. Miller Kate, can you see something around here? This color, what color is that? Yellow. Yellow. Yeah, it's yellow. And it's supposed to be gold. Okay? Yeah. But we didn't have any gold. Which reminds me, where are my helpers with the bags that you need to hand out? <laughs> yes, it reminds us of uh, gold because what heaven is going to be like. Streets of gold, the Bible tells us. And it's going to be a wonderful, beautiful place. And it's a circle reminding us that it lasts forever. Forever and ever. Yes. And so, in, uh, everybody's getting a, a bag right now. Open your bag, and there's a box of crayons in the bag. Sometimes we, we talk about a creed. The Bible has a bunch of them. One creed that I like is only a few words long. And it was Thomas who said it after he saw Jesus, after Jesus had been crucified and he rose from the dead. And Thomas wasn't with them, remember, once the first time he was seen? So he said, unless I touch the place of the nails and put my hand in the side where the spear went in, I will not believe. Some people
people are thick-headed like that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit working on us. Well, the next time Jesus was with them, and when he showed Thomas, Thomas said these words. When he finally believed, he said, My Lord and my God. And that's a creed right there. My Lord and my God. And I don't know if this is a creed. Pastor Duro and I have been talking about this one on the phone a few times about the man with the sick child and Jesus healed the child and before he did the man told Jesus Lord I believe help my unbelief I think that's probably something we have said whether we admit it or not many many times we believe help There are others, and so uh, in the Bible. But it says here, what is a creed? Let's say it together. The explanation of the small catechism says a creed is a statement of what we believe, teach, and confess. The word creed comes from the Latin word credo, which means I believe. Many organizations have and use creeds. The church uses three creeds. The creeds of the church are different from all other creeds because they proclaim a living and wonderful faith that comes from God. Why do we speak the creed in the divine service? Well, what if I told you that when you speak the creed, you are telling the whole world what you believe? It's true. When you speak the creed in the divine service, you are responding in faith to what God has done for you through Jesus. And you are confessing the very gospel message that saves all who believe. What a great thing to do every Sunday. Let's say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, God, God Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ is only Son, our Lord, who was by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he came upon the flesh, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church. So sorry. So the offerings are actually just the plates are at the edge today. Oh. And so if you guys want to just put them in there as you leave, you can do that. So okay. now it's your turn. Now it's your turn. Now your story. <laughs> okay. Well, it's my turn to tell a story. Well, it's not a uh, difficult story at all, but. Um, Yes, it's the story of Jesus and the children. And Jesus was a pretty busy fellow, as you can imagine, being chased after all the time by the people who wanted him to do things for them. You know, he wanted them, they wanted Jesus to heal people. They wanted Jesus to help them believe. They wanted Jesus to do all kinds of things. And they wanted to see Jesus do all kinds of things. One time... Some people were bringing their children to Jesus, just like some of you did today. And they were getting, um, that there were enough of them that the disciples got concerned, and they just thought it was too much for Jesus, and that Jesus needed some time out and to rest and everything. And so the disciples said, hey, get those children away from Jesus. He's too busy. He doesn't have time for little children. Guess what happened? You know. 
Oh, Jesus heard that, and the Bible says he became indignant. I mean, he wasn't happy with his disciples. He said, hey, let the children come to me, he said, and do not stop them. children in his arms. You can imagine how he was doing that, and he blessed them. And he told them about God's love and how he loves them. He was God's love through Jesus. And that's the name of that story. Okay. We uh, move on to the next hymn. before you with prayers on our hearts. We offer to you our very lives that we may live according to your will. We pray for all children, for their playfulness, for their curiosity, and for their, and for their joyfulness. We pray as they go beyond the boundaries of home, that they will find strong and true friendships. We pray especially for those called to lead and to care for them. Grant, O oh God, that our children and the adults who minister with them might grow in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all young people, for the ways they test boundaries and question authority. We pray, O oh God, that they will continue to develop and use the gifts that you have given them. We pray for those called to teach, to lead, to coach and to mentor our young people. Grant your wisdom and generous spirit to those youth and adults as they commit to grow righteously and in, comple in a complex world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our college students, for the questions that are facing them about their future. We pray for those called to lead and to care for them, for professors, counselors, administrators, and advisors. Nurture all students and leaders, O oh God, in communities of fellowship and protect them from isolation and loneliness. Grant your courage to these young adults and adults as they engage in critical learning and discovery of the stewardship of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who teach and lead O oh God, inspire them with creativity and commitment. 
Give them energy to continue teaching and bringing forth the best from their students. Help us to appreciate their efforts and to treat them with respect. Provide opportunities, O oh God, for their refreshment and renewal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all adults as they endeavor to live faithful lives in their homes and in their workplaces. We pray for all who are parents, step-parents, guardians, caregivers, and grandparents of children, youth, and young adults. Help them to find the time to sit and to listen to their young people. Give them hearts and minds filled with patience, understanding, and wisdom. Enable them to share your wisdom and love, O oh God, in word and by example. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who learn, children, youth, young adults, and adults. Keep them from being discouraged when facing the trials of the day. Instill in them a desire to grow in wisdom and understanding. Grant them the discipline of study and the ability to concentrate. We pray for all of us as learners, O oh God. We know that we never stop learning about your love and faithfulness. We thank you, O oh God, our Creator, for teaching us through your word and through your Son, Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. Students, may God surround you with blessings and protection as you enter this new school year. As you carry notes and books and assignments, know that you also carry the love of Christ to see everyone around you as someone who is loved by God. May you be filled with God's grace. As you grow in wisdom and knowledge, may you grow in compassion. We will. Amen. And we conclude our service with our special guest. Mm -hmm.